Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now I'm quite aware that I've covered quite a few handheld radios on this channel, with the majority of them being illegal in most countries because of those spurious emissions emitted while transmitting on them. Now I was actually quite hesitant to look at this radio at first because I assumed it was just going to be like the rest. However, when I hooked it up to my spectrum analyzer, I didn't see the result I was expecting. So can this $60 dual band handheld radio perform as well as those top tier radios? Now let's take a look. Now this is the TID radio TDH8, which is advertised as a 10 watt dual band radio. Now it's also available as a strictly GMRS radio too, but essentially they are the same radio and you can fully unlock them. Now I know what you're thinking, surely a handheld radio cannot actually output 10 watts. Well, we'll find out later in the video. Now in the box, we get the usual accessories and you'll be glad to know the user's manual is actually usable. That's assuming that you'd like to read manuals. We also get the battery, the radio itself, an antenna, a wrist strap, a mains outlet, USB supply, a USB-C cable, a belt clip, and of course, a drop-in desktop charger. Now if we take a look at the desktop charger, You've probably guessed this already from seeing the USB power supply and the USB-C cable is that the battery can be charged via USB. Now that's with the desktop charger or a USB socket on the battery itself. The included battery is a 7.4 volts rechargeable battery with a rated capacity of 2500 milliamp hour. Now on the bottom of the battery, you'll see a USB-C socket and on the other side is a small LED which is used to indicate the charging status. Now it goes red for when it's charging and green for when it's fully charged. You can still charge the battery while it's in the radio, or if you have another battery, you can charge it separately just by plugging in the USB-C cable to an appropriate power source, like the mains adapter that's supplied. Now something that I never really noticed before, but the HA has a rounded fill to the edges, and comparing against other radios with more squared edges, the HA actually feels quite comfortable in the hand. Now it's definitely a sturdy and well thought out design, at least on the casing. Backlit keypad and function buttons are well defined. And for those eagle eyed viewers, you would have noticed a button labeled as BL. Yep, this radio has Bluetooth and this button enables or disables Bluetooth. So on the left side of the radio, we find the usual PTT and two programmable function buttons. Now these can be used to enable the torch LED or NOAA weather channels or FM broadcast radio. On the right side, we have a speak mic connection, which is also used with a compatible programming cable, which incidentally I did not receive in the box. And there's a good reason for this and more about that later. On the top of the radio, we see the antenna socket, a white LED, an orange function button and the on and off control, which also acts as volume. Now, as mentioned earlier, there is a USB-C socket in the base of the battery and when attached to the radio, it's still accessible. Turning on the H8, we can see that the screen layout is unlike the hundreds of other radios that's coming out of China. So does this mean that this radio has its own unique design? Swapping between VFO A and B can be performed with a dedicated button, along with changing from memory mode to VFO mode with their own dedicated buttons. As mentioned earlier, the BL button will enable or disable the Bluetooth feature with a little Bluetooth icon shown on the screen when it's active. Now, adjusting frequency can be performed by either direct dial well in VFO mode, or you can use the up and down arrow buttons, which move to the steps that's programmed within the menu system. Now there's no rotary control for this, but the up and down buttons also change the memory channel when you're in memory recall mode. Now all features and functions are accessible through the menu, of which there are around 45 different options to change. Now one of which is a mic gain control, which actually has 35 steps so you should be able to adjust it to your liking. The included manual or downloadable manual from the TID radio website is written well enough to learn what each of the menu items are for. Now, detailed information on each menu item can be found in the manual. 
Now, unfortunately, there's no real S meter, i.e. a meter that shows you how strong a receiving station is. However, it does have a transmitting paragraph at the top of the display. It's labeled as zero to 10, but it's actually not relative to the power output. This is M0 DQW, Mic 0 Delta Quebec Whiskey, testing the audio on the TID radio TDH8 on two meters with the modulation set to narrow. This is uh, M0 DQW, over. This is M0 DQW, M0 DQW, checking the audio on TID radio H8. On uh, this is now on a wide setting, so this is now on the wide setting. This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey over. Now, if we take a look at the RF output power transmitting into a dummy load through my NiSci power meter, we see an output power of around 500 milliwatts on low power at 145.5 megahertz. On medium power, we see an output power of around 2.4 watts, and then on high power, we see an output power of just over 9 watts. Now catering for loss of signal in the coax between the radio and the meter, plus whether or not this meter is 100% lab accurate, that's pretty good going. That's close to the 10 watts rated power output. Now at 435.5 megahertz on high power, we see an output of around 7 watts, while on medium power, we see an output of around 4 watts, and then on low power, we see an output of around 1.7 watts. So that's a little bit different from the rated specs. Now let's take a look at the spurious emissions on the 2 meter band at 145.5 megahertz. Now the scan time on this meter is set to 1.7 seconds, but watch what happens as the scans progress and settle down. The noise floor creeps up to just below minus 60 dB, and the second and subsequent harmonics are gone. Now they're not gone, they're just lower than minus 60 dB, which is absolutely awesome for this radio. Now this has to be one of the cleanest radios that I've seen coming out of China on the two meter band for quite some time. There's some real dirty radios out there. Okay, so two meters is clean. Let's take a look at the 70 centimeter band at 435 megahertz. Now the scan time is a little longer on this one due to the bandwidth needed to see the harmonics, but just watch what happens as it settles down. Now that second harmonic is more than 49 dB down from the fundamental and subsequent harmonics are either gone or lower than that 49 dB. Again, pretty impressive. Well, it is to me, especially if you've seen lots of radios which fail this test miserably. Now, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, let me just quickly explain why this measurement is important. Now, most radio wave government entities set out a rule to which all transmitting equipment should abide to. Now this is to stop transmitters interfering with other radio receivers. The second or subsequent harmonics of a radio transmission could potentially transmit on a frequency that's being occupied by another licensed system. And it's illegal for those levels to be high enough to be able to herd on those other frequencies. Now in the past, we've seen many radios that are illegal to transmit on due to this issue. So it's finally nice to see a sub $60 dual band handheld radio that according to my limited test gear shows it to be fully compliant. Okay, so let's finally talk about programming on this radio. Now due to the inbuilt Bluetooth option, there are actually quite a few options. Now firstly, you can use a website called Oddmaster, which uses the browser to program the radio via Bluetooth. As long as your computer has Bluetooth enabled, you should be able to communicate with your H8 radio directly from your web browser with literally no cables. Now, Oddmaster supports a whole host of other radio models. And when you're logged in, you can save a named profile for any radio that you have set up, meaning you can save all of your supported radio program backups all in one place. Of course, this is depending on having an internet connection. Now, the Oddmaster app available on Android and iOS can also log into your Oddmaster account. So programming your radio while in the field over Bluetooth is pretty simple, especially if you already have profiles set up that you've done at home, for example. Now, the other options for programming are to use a programming cable. You can either use the dedicated Windows application or you can use Chirp. Now, for me, I always favor Chirp for programming on all my radios if they're supported 
as it has an inbuilt method to retrieve localized repeaters using the repeater book function. Now this makes programming repeaters super simple and quick compared to entering them all yourself one by one. Well, there we go, guys. That's the TID Radio H8, and I'm pretty impressed by this radio, especially the power output levels and the fact that the transmissions are clean. Connectivity for programming is abundant and the screen looks pretty good too. And my only personal niggle, which I would have liked to have seen, would have been to have a proper S meter so you can provide accurate signal reports to other stations. Now hopefully TID Radio will consider this on future models because even though it may seem trivial to some, I think it's quite an important feature. Anyway guys, let me know what you think about this radio in the comments below. Hopefully I'll test out some more of their products in the near future, especially if they're going to be as good quality as this one. Anyway, to the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.